It's time for Recipe of the Day. With Thanksgiving coming up this week, it is vegetable side dish time of the year, and I'm bringing you a delicious roasted summer squash. They are available this time of year. They're at my grocery store, those yellow squash that look kind of like zucchini. And just so you know, you can use zucchini in this recipe as well. So what is summer squash? Summer squash is those kinds of squashes that have the thinner skin that you can eat. You don't have to peel it off. And so they're just easier to prepare than, say, like a butternut or something like that, right? And you get the yellow summer squash that comes in two varieties, the straight, straight neck one, or a crook neck where it's kind of like bulk bulbous at one end and then a little bit like bent or crooked at the narrower end. You can use either of those for this. Like I said, you could use zucchini. I haven't tried this with patty pan squash, which is one of the other summer squash varieties. I'm sure it would probably work, but I don't know. I have tried it with the two kinds of yellow squash and with the zucchini. So any of those are going to be great. Now I said this would work as like a Thanksgiving side dish and I really think it would because you get this like really almost buttery squash with a nice crumb topping. So it's not quite a casserole, but if you put it in a casserole dish with a scoopy spoon, it's going to act like one, and it's really, really tasty. It's kind of like nice and fresh flavored, a little bit buttery, like I said, and then the crunchy breadcrumbs and the browning on there just make it even better, and I'm going to tell you when we get to the breadcrumbs how you can make them even more special than what the recipe says. Okay, you're going to start by preheating the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you are taking three medium of those yellow squash, and you're slicing them. Now, I have sliced them into one inch rounds when I was doing this, and that's because I don't want them to get super soft and mushy. I actually like when my zucchini and my yellow squash have a little bit of an al dente center. This is not quite going to happen here, but they have more of a chance of not turning to total mush the thicker they go. And I will say I've even made this with like one and a half inch thick slices, and that was my preference because they aren't fully cooked all the way to the middle. But if you like your soft, you might want to go even thinner. So I've said one inch, that's going to be like medium softness. If you like your summer squash, your zucchini, and your yellow squash to be nice and soft, you could go half an inch thick, okay? So you're going to slice them into whatever thickness you are slicing them, and then if there are really wide sections, this will be especially true if you're using that crook neck on its like wider, more bulbous body part, then you're going to want to cut those into smaller pieces. So half moons or even quarters if they're really big. Okay, then you put those slices of squash into a large bowl with one tablespoon of olive oil, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, and give them a good toss around, and then arrange them in a single layer on a large baking sheet. And I like to make sure that they're all like a flat or sliced side up, because that's where we want the most of the browning, not skin side up. So tip them all over so they're like that, and you bake them until they're just starting to brown about 10 to 12 minutes. And I'll just say, if you, like me, want that more al dente squash, you could instead broil them here just until they're brown, because then they're going to brown faster and they're not going to turn as soft in the middle. Okay, while those are cooking, you're going to mix together that breadcrumb mixture. It's two tablespoons of panko breadcrumbs, another tablespoon of olive oil, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And if you wanted to make this extra special, you could add in some cheese here. Parmesan would be my cheese of choice. You'd want two tablespoons of it, but you could even do cheddar cheese. Just kind of like mix it up with the breadcrumbs. The panko breadcrumbs are nice and sharp, and if you push the breadcrumbs together with the cheese, it kind of breaks up the strands and mixes it all through there. Okay, once those squash slices are turning brown in spots, you're going to take them out, and you're going to flip them all over, stir them around a bit, then sprinkle that breadcrumb mixture over top, and then you are putting them under the broil this time for sure, just until they're golden brown. Keep your eye on them because it can happen really quickly. It's going to be three to four minutes. And then transfer that to your casserole dish, add that spoon, and serve. I will put the link to this recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there. You can also subscribe to this podcast there. And I want to say, if you are subscribed on Apple Podcasts, if you listen to this on Apple, I would really appreciate it if you would leave a comment 
and a five-star rating there. Somebody left a comment recently, Pina, thank you so much. I'm really happy that you're listening to the show and liking it and liking the recipes too. Thank you for telling me about that. I really appreciate it. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all-new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast, Recipe of the Day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. <laughs> 